Hi, hi, this is your boy Life of Darius, a.k.a. Dre the Martian, and we are back. We're back today with the highly anticipated, some of y'all would say long-awaited, but I wouldn't say that long, but it's here finally, Rubber Soul. Let's get to it, y'all. Yes, yes, it's Rubber Soul time, finally. Now, I'm not going to do too much talking in this intro, y'all, but I do just want to give a quick disclaimer that I am in the proper state of mind for this album, okay, y'all? All right, y'all gave me some really interesting lore to this album, y'all. And I said this was the first album with a beat. I thought the Beatles was all LSD, y'all. You know what I'm saying? My Beatles, my Beatles knowledge was that they started messing with the LSD, and that's how we got uh, Sgt. Peppers, right? But apparently they, they dabbled in, you know, they, they started just with some regular marijuana at first. So apparently Mr. Bob Dylan linked up with the Beatles in late 64, early 65, and was like, hey, bro, y'all cool, but y'all a little too uptight, bro. Get here. Yeah. Smoke some of this, bro. And history was changed forever after that, apparently. That's a crazy story, and I definitely want to dive more into that story because Bob Dylan, like, okay, it's arrested. So listen, that's got me really excited for this album because any of y'all out there who've experienced uh, marijuana, you know that it's the before marijuana part of your life and then the after marijuana part of your life. Your brain is never really the same after, you know what I'm saying? You start delving in these activities. So I'm really excited to see how they change their writing style, what they write about, how these songs sound, the the flow. Like, are we going to get like our first little John Lennon like psychedelia joint on here? I'm, I've been waiting. Now, y'all know I always got to go back and just give my little um extra thoughts on the previous work and when it comes to help y'all I think at the end of my help reaction I said it was kind of a toss-up for me between hard days night and help and, and that's not a toss-up anymore it's help by a mile maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit because a hard day's night is a really great project from track one to track 13 there are no fall-offs right but the highs on help just hit a little different like tracks like help the night before ticket to ride yesterday like these songs at least for me could compete with some of the best songs off of like the later albums and type of way especially helping um ticket especially helping yesterday now obviously on my day-to-day -day, I would prefer like a Sgt. Pepper's Abbey Road type of vibe over these earlier albums but these do have really good value because it's just like a it's a feeling you get when you listen to these earlier albums that I just can't put I can't explain yet but I'm gonna find a way to articulate it and I'm gonna yeah anyway though that's enough talking on the intro man y'all got on me about my last couple intros I I said I'd be yapping too much sorry I guess but uh we're here today finally rubber soul track number one drive my car I'm in that mode y'all already is y'all already man I know y'all I know y'all already because <laughs> I'll be over whooping, but let's go. Just the girl, what you wanted to be. Okay. Don't think in between. Yeah. Maybe you can drive my car. Beep, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you can drive oh, my yeah. car. <laughs> this is crazy. Beep, 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 yeah. Beep, 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 yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. okay. All right, great way to intro this album, man. They, they gave Paul the intro, man, for the first time in a, a goddamn long time, bro. Okay, good job right there, uh, Sir McCartney, the only Sir <laughs> in the Beatles, apparently. All right, yeah, so that was track one, Drive My Car, and that was a beautiful way to intro this album, man. We I love the Paul intro. I love how Paul kind of utilized the gruff in his voice a lot on here, like, throughout the entire song. Like, I like how he handled this one vocally. But even then, not just Paul, like, how John slipped in on the part of the hook, and maybe I love you, and I think it was a little George in there, too. And that's one thing I noticed in, like, subsequent listens to, like, Help, A Hard Day's Night, um, with the Beals and things of that nature, is even though there's one main person singing the song, everybody else is helping build these melodies and harmonies and vocals. So yeah, these songs are a lot more than just the main singer, and this song was a beautiful example of that. I like the Drive My Car lyric. This is a real playful, fun song, man. I don't think it was anything too serious. Great production, too. The cowbells, I, I didn't hear no. Was there drums on here? It was, was the cowbells the drums? Because I was bopping to the cowbells, not no drums. And then the guitars, like everything on here just sounds better already. Not just like them sounding better, but the mix. Like I said, Rubber Soul mix is bad. This doesn't sound too terrible. Like the vocals were definitely panned to the right, but it still felt full. And I'm hoping the rest of the album follows that trend, man. Beautiful intro, beautiful start. And we're on the track number two. We got Norwegian Wood. This bird has flown. Okay. All right. Kinky. Let's get to it, y'all. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like that. Wow. 
Fish on the road. Yo, these guitars. <laughs> Ooh. Hello, what? <laughs> okay. Whoa. All right, that was track number two, Norwegian Wood. This bird has flown in... My mind's kind of fucked right now, y'all. Hold on. All right, that was track number two, Norwegian Wood. This bird has flown. And let me just say right now, off of just listening to this track, not even just the sound, but the lyrics of this track sound like somebody who's high out their fucking mind, okay? Like when the first verse led to him just realizing it wasn't a chair and then just sitting on the rug and drinking his wine, I'm like, oh yeah, John, John he's, in, he's in that mode. Now, this is, this is a new John. This is a different John right here. And it's crazy because it's such a big whiplash from track one because track one was kind of standard happy-go-lucky Beatles still in a way. This track is really like sad. And not just sad, but psychedelic. The way that John is like bending his voice combined with like the little guitar strikes that just slowly build throughout the song. This, yes, bro. This is the, we're starting to get into the John that made me fall in love with the Beatles. That Sgt. Pepper's Lucy in the Sky with Diamond type of John, man. This is like, I feel like the first steps to that. I, I love this song, right? We're, we're two for two, of course, a strong two for two. And let's just keep the momentum going, y'all. We're on to track number three. Okay, we got You Won't See Me. All right, let's let's get to it, y'all. Your line's engaged. Yeah. So act your oh, age. Yeah. Talk to me. If you won't see me, hey. you won't see me. Hey. You see me. Yeah. <sighs> Talk to me, Paul. I what I was missing. Yeah. So the day me, you won't see me. Okay. okay. <laughs> Yo. Yo. I, this was two years after Love Me Do, y'all. Like, this is great. Like, that great song from Paul. I'm going to just say that, bro. But this was, I'm just, I'm just realizing, like, this was literally like a, a year, maybe a year and a half after the Love Me Do era. Like, what is going on? I don't know how I didn't listen to this album along with um, Sgt. Pepper's and Magical Mystery Tour. This is along that same sound of like that psychedelic sound that I love. Do y'all hear Paul's voice on this song? Like, he sounds amazing the way he's dragging his voice. Each time he does that little ah, melody, it just builds and builds and becomes more powerful. And then the harmonies in the background just act like, gee, and this was two years after Love Me Do. I've been listening to Help the last couple of days, and I realized like the la a lot of Help was really Paul, right? I was giving John a lot of credit for Help, but Paul, they were the gap really closed a lot between Paul and John on Help, right? And on this one, just based off the two Paul offerings we've gotten so far, Drive My Car and You Won't See Me, be like it seems like every song Paul does, he just gets better and better throughout the albums. Like every album, every song he's on, is just better and better, 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 better. Like it's crazy. The evolution has been so rapid that now I got to see who got the best whoops on here now, y'all. I'm sorry. I don't want to make this a competition, but I got to see. Right? right. Paul done gave us Drive My Car, You Won't See Me. John done gave us Norwegian Wood. All great songs. We're a strong three for three right now, but this is just crazy to me, y'all. It's crazy to me I didn't hear this already, bro. It's crazy to me I've ignored this album, but this album, to me, isn't really talked in, like in the vein of Sgt. Pepper's Rubber, I mean, Sgt. Pepper's Revolver, Abbey Road. It's not talked about in that same vein. I don't know why. Like, maybe I'll start to know after I listen to more of this, but amazing start so far. Amazing start. We're on the track number four, Nowhere Man. I'm sorry for geeking out. Let's get to it. He's a real nowhere man sitting in making all. Oh my God! Talk to me, George. God sounds like a ghost, like some type of extraterrestrial being. Am I tripping? Yeah. Don't sneak in there like that, Paul. Don't sneak in there like that, Paul. Man, let John have his moment, man. We, I see you, Paul. Bro. G great joint right there from John Lennon, man. Him and Paul are going back and forth right now. I don't know who going to get it by the end of this album, but yes. And it's crazy, bro. This song sucked me in so quick with like just 
those alien extraterrestrial no man like it said john it sounds like john is singing from another life like the, the power and just like the reverb everything just yes right but i got so sucked in just by how great this song was vocally and melodically i didn't realize like john this song john was spitting on it and I said Norwegian Wood was kind of more of the John style of songs that I like. A little more negative, unfortunately. A little more self-deprecating. And this one was that, but it was shielded a little bit. And I'm assuming Nowhere Man is in kind of the same vein as I'm a loser. Like, he's a nowhere man going nowhere with his nowhere plans. Like, it's, it, it's kind of in that same vein. It kind of makes you wonder, like, what was John going through at this point in his life where he started seeing the world through this lens? Right, help was kind of the first little sprinkles of that. But what's going like the first two songs are Norwegian Wood and Nowhere Man. This is the John Lennon that I know, right? This is the John Lennon pen that I know. And it's it's actually a little kind of bittersweet now, actually seeing the evolution like in front of me. Like the music is amazing, right? The music is getting better. But hearing him go from the happy go lucky soul on please, please be to nowhere man, like just experiencing this transition in real time, it's a little heavy. But we're going to keep going, man. Great song right there. Might might be my favorite song so far, but it, we're a clean 4 for 4, right? I'm not going to keep yapping. This album's going to have me geeking out. This might be like an hour-long video. I don't want it to be that long, y'all. So we're going to get to track number five. <laughs> Think for yourself. Let's keep the momentum going, Beatles. I'm ready. I've got a word or two so, George? To say about the things that you do. Hello. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do what you want to do. Yeah? Oh. Of the life that you have in mind. Oh yeah. Talk to me, George. What you want to do. It's not like a sixties cop chase. And this song kind of fucked up. <laughs> Scandalous, George. Hey, man. Okay, G great song right there from George Harrison. We're keeping the momentum going, man. But let me just say something. <laughs> George is scandalous, bro. <laughs> when my health reaction dropped, one of the comments that got my attention was somebody saying, only George will write a song titled You Like Me Too Much. Right, and I kind of understood what they were saying by that. But after hearing this one, I completely understand. It's kind of funny, like, how different George's outlook on love is than the rest of these dudes, right? Like, they all sing about love, but they all have a very different outlook on it. And George's is very, it's kind of asshole y'all. Like, not in a bad way, but kind of in a bad way, right? Paul's songs are so like, love me, dude, love, come to me, love, oh, you broke my heart, I'm so sad. John's songs is more so like, dang, like, why you do me like that? I'm really depressed. Like, I, I might do something to you. Like, I might show up at your house type of vibes, right? Whereas with George, it's more like, shorty, I'm over you. Leave me alone. Like, that's the type of vibes I'm getting from George. And I, lo I love that, man. It's just so distinctly George. And it's a great song. I think we're finally at the point now where when a George Harrison song comes on, it's not like, oh, I hope this is good. It's, I know this is going to be good. Help was a little bit of that. You know, the George songs was good. I don't think they were as good as the Paul and John songs on there, but this one, Think For Yourself, holds up just as well as the first four tracks, man. We're a smooth five for five, right? This is, like, I'm loving this album so far. Y'all. I'm, yes. All right, we're on to track number six. We got the word, the bird is the word, whatever it means. Let's get into it, y'all. Yes, I'm loving this album so far. Uh, yeah, what's the word, Paul? Of course it is. Of course it's love. Oh! Yeah? Oh yeah. What is that? Uh. That George on the guitar? Alright George. Talk to me John. Yoko? No, that ain't Yoko. Yeah? Oh my god! Uh, nah, I ain't never heard a George guitar sound like this. Not, I'm talking off the earlier albums. Not 
power in that one, man. Great song right there from John Lennon. I, I don't know, man. I can't call it. John and Paul is going nuts right now. That was track number six, The Word, and we're definitely keeping the momentum going, bro. This is the Harmony album right here, y'all. Maybe I'm tripping, bro, but you won't see me nowhere, man. Like, it's, this is four straight songs with just, like, blasting, powerful, beautiful harmonies, bro, and I'm, I'm here for it. Y'all gotta understand, even though I love hard rock, banging, you know what I'm saying, screaming vocals, tearing the vocals and things of that nature, bro, I love shit like this, too. This is what got me into the Beatles. This, like, smooth, silky, psychedelic, like in their own world type of energy and that's where we're finally getting on this album bro yes i think just this music represents me so well because sometimes it feels like i'm in my own world right just my demeanor my attitude my approach when it comes to things sometimes i feel like i'm in my own world sometimes i feel like the nowhere man right so that's why these type of songs resonate with me so much this is perfect so far flawless need i say even george like i don't know what ringo's gonna do Right, I'm a little wary about the Ringo song on here. I know I, I don't know if Ringo has a song on here, but if he does, yeah, man. On the track number seven, we gonna pray for Ringo. On the track number seven, we got Michelle. Let's get to it, y'all. Michelle, uh -oh. my bell, mm. Sunday monkey won't play again. What did he just say? The monkey won't play again? What? What? Oh. Mm. That's, that's, that's not English. That's not English. I think Paul created a new language on here. I don't know what was going on during the hook. But still, all in all, a beautiful song right there. Great song. <laughs> but I'm confused, y'all. Hold on. Nah, nah. Uh uh. uh. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, oh, he was speaking oh, Espanol. He was speaking Espanol. Oh, see, I knew it. I said it like Paul got love for the Spanish music, bro. I, okay, I was a little confused, y'all. I thought Paul was like speaking pig Latin or something, but he was just, he was in his Spanish bag right there. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Okay, thank you. All right, that was track number seven, Michelle, and a great song right there from Paul. That was a classic Paul joint right there, and it was very needed at this point in the album, man. Just beautiful, right? I think I said during the hard days, not reaction. Now, Paul got to have an affinity for Spanish music, right, with all those little Spanish guitars and sounds and uh, patterns that he likes to use. And this was a prime example of that right here, man. I, I love this song, a really heartfelt song. Only a song Paul could make, and I would enjoy it probably, I'm going to be honest with you. But still an amazing song. We're keeping the momentum going right there. We are a strong 7-for-7. Seven seven. I don't mean like a 7-for-7 seven seven with a couple if. I mean a solid 7-for-7. Seven seven. This album has been perfect so far. I'm not expecting any drop-offs anytime soon, y'all. I'm Yes, I'm having a very great time listening to this, if y'all can't tell, man. just Let's go. Track number 8, What Goes On. Let's get to it, y'all. What okay. goes on in your heart? Oh, no. Come on, Ringo. Hold on, I'm gonna call a little melody right there. What's the rhythm of this guitar? Hey. Yeah. Alright. I can't, I can't be mad at this one, y'all. I can't. Okay. Hey, that was, that was a good whoop from Ringo right there, y'all. I wanted that. Y'all saw I was about to start hating. It came together perfectly, man. Great, good, good song right there from Mr. Ringo Starr, man. All right, that was track number eight, What Goes On. And this song definitely had me scared when it came on, man. It was giving me Honey Don't flashbacks, okay? I, I didn't want another Honey Don't incident, especially on an album this good. But thankfully, we avoided that, man. Ringo passed his little test on this album with Flying Colors, okay? Because I think Ringo actually did a really good job with his performance on this song, man. He sounded really, you know, beatily on here, man, if that makes any sense to y'all. He sounded really beatily during his verses. And then you combine that with um, John or George, whoever that was, helping him out with the harmonies in the background, combined with that little off-kilter rhythm guitar, man. This, was, this song was good enough to hold up to the seven that came before it. It's definitely my least favorite, but... Not in a bad way at all. Not like in a, you know, the honey don't, I want to be your man type of way, man. It's not on that level, but great song right there from Ringo. Might be Ringo's best song so far. I'm partial to boys. You know what I'm saying? I'm partial to boys. That's a great song, but 
Good work right there from Ringo. He keeping the momentum going. We're a solid eight for eight. And now that we've passed the Ringo test, we have a really good chance for a 14 or 14 album. So let's get to it, y'all. We're going to keep it moving. We're on to track number nine. Oh, I was just talking about boys. And we got track number nine, girl. Let's get to it, y'all. Is there anybody going to listen to my oh, story? Oh, shit. I love girl you want so much it makes you sorry. Damn. Still. Oh. Girl, girl. Girl. stop inhaling me, bro. What is going on? She's the kind of girl to put Ooh. you down when friends are there. Oh. Oh. Stop inhaling me, John Lennon, man. What's going on with that, man? Beautiful song besides the inhales. <laughs> nah, I like the inhales, but good song right there from John Lennon, man. I think I think him and Paul just went back to back with their little they little, you know, they little soft acoustic joints. I feel like Girl is kind of the darker version of Michelle, as in it's just the John Lennon version of Michelle. <laughs> That's why it's so much darker, but like, geez. Michelle by Paul was about this girl that he really loves, this girl that he'll even learn to speak a different language for. That's how much he loves Michelle, right? But on Girl, this is about John being in love with a girl. This is a toxic relationship. This is a terribly toxic relationship on here. Like when he tries to leave her compliments, tell her she looks good. She acts like, oh, why you got to tell me I look good? You should know I look good. I'm your girl. I'm this special. But like, it's, this is a toxic relationship to a T. And I said it, man, it's kind of bittersweet, like actually seeing the transformation. Like the music is improving, but the lyrical, you don't just start writing darker lyrics just to write darker lyrics. Well, at least these guys didn't do that. You can see as they progress through their 20s, and experience more of actual real life, right? Outside of just the, you know, the the pubs of Liverpool, bro, they had, they, they, they was a little jaded, especially John. You can feel the jadedness of John on every single song on here. When it comes to comparing Michelle and girl, I don't know. It's a toss up. I feel like Michelle definitely had like a more, that, that the, the instrumental to Michelle was just so beautiful the way they produced that song. But girl kind of just strikes me a little bit more just because, Hey, man, I, I thrive on negativity. I'm sorry, y'all. So we're going to go with girl on the Michelle versus girl thing. Paul and I, I got to get through these last five tracks, man. But they they really going. They tennis in this album right now, y'all. I love it, man. <laughs> but we're on the track number 10. Okay, we got I'm Looking Through You. Now let's get into it, y'all. I'm ready. Enough conjecture. Enough yapping. Track 10. I'm looking through you. Uh -oh. Paul got something to say. Different, you mm. have yeah. Oh! Hold on! Yeah. Okay. Alright, man. Hey, Paul McCartney got something to say, man. He ain't gonna let John get his shine too long, man. <laughs> let me stop, man. That's another great song right there. We're a smooth 10 for 10, clearly, okay? Alright, that was track number 10, I'm Looking Through You. And that's another great song from Paul on here, man. This album is just an exhibition of... <laughs> Like, this is just the greatest artist of the 60s being the greatest artist of the 60s, man. That's not much like everything. This is, yo. I remember earlier kind of saying George and John have an affinity for writing these kind of more spitefully tunes in the Beatles catalog. But Paul can do the same thing. And he just showed that on this track right here. It just sounded prettier. <laughs> it's funny because I'm looking through you could kind of be a sequel to Girl. Because I'm looking through you, it's kind of the progression of Girl. You have this girl that's latched on to you, toxic, you can't let her go. And then you get to the point where I can see through you. You're not the same. You don't matter. You're not a factor. It's time for you to just move on, man. And I like how they did that right there. And we all been in those situations where somebody tries to come back in your life, you know, after you've long moved on past them, long tried to progress past them to try to, you know, drag you back down with them, try to put their problems, their issues back on you. And it gets tough. Right. But the analogy I like to use is, you know, getting back with an ex is kind of like reheating McDonald's. Right. Like when you reheat McDonald's, it's never going to taste like McDonald's is supposed to taste like it's never going to be the same. So why would you reheat McDonald's? That's kind of my analogy, if that makes any sense. But. Great song right there from Paul, man. These songs, not only are these songs enjoyable, like, lyrically, sound-wise, they really got me thinking and talking. And I know some of y'all don't like that, but I love doing it, so tough titties. Anyway, on to track number 11, <laughs> we got In My Life. Let's get to it, y'all. There are places I remember. Mm. All these places have their moments. Yes. With lovers and friends. Yes. In my life, no, I'll never lose affection. Hey. Yeah. 
Beautiful falsetto, the falsetto John, <laughs> rare appearance. <laughs> okay, whoa. Okay, hold on, <laughs> y'all. That was track. Whoa. Okay, I had to catch myself before I said something <laughs> off the off the cuff, man, because this song, this song is like, at least for me, just a perfect representation of just. Growing up, man, growing up and going through experiences and I'll put it like this. Now, I feel like I've lived a very good life through and through, but I would say the prime time of my life would definitely be 2016 through 2020. That's when I was in high school. I lived in the same neighborhood as all my friends. We was outside every day doing stupid shit, even if we didn't have nothing to do. We'd just be outside playing basketball, going to go and get food here, walking to this house, walking to this girl's house, doing that. And it was really fun times, but... Sometimes when I just think back to those times and think about how I'll never get moments like those back again, it's painful, right? Nostalgia is painful, okay? And it's even more painful when it involves love, man. When it involves a lover, somebody you spent so much intimate time with, it can be damn near like heartbreaking, like stress inducing. Like, you know, it's terrible. So I think this was just a really powerful song from John, man, lyrically, even sound. This is probably the best produced song on this entire album. Like the, the chords, the melodies, the, the the combination of George's guitar with John doing his thing with the rhythm guitar. It was just mwah, beautiful, beautiful. It almost kind of seemed like John trying to do his own version of Yesterday. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but it kind of had the same themes of Yesterday, very stripped back. But just in a John Lennon type of way. And I'm not going to compare the two songs, man. I was, but yes. Yes from John Lennon right there. A plus track. Might. I don't know if I say it's the best song on the album. Probably the one that impacted, hit me the most out of all of these. But we'll get to that at the end, man. We're on to track number 12. Okay. We got to wait, man. Let's, let's get to it, y'all. Long time. Now I'm coming back home. Hold on. But if your heart breaks, don't wait till I come back to your side. Nah. We'll forget the to your side. Yeah. We'll forget the tears we cried. But if your heart breaks, yeah. don't wait. Yeah. Turn me away. Wait till I come back okay. to your side. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, okay, first of all, great song right there by Paul McCartney, John Lennon, one of them two. Okay, so that was track number 12, Wait, and good song right there by, I think that was Lennon and McCartney on that song right there, like I was hearing Paul vocals at one point, then John vocals at the next, and when they come together, it's always a great song, right, but I just noticed something during this. And y'all can tell me if I'm wrong, this could be completely just head cannon type of ideas right here, but if I'm looking at the last four tracks, right, I'm looking at Girl, I'm Looking Through You, In My Life, and Wait. It feels like these tracks could all in some way be connected lyrically, right? Even if the Beatles intended to or not, they kind of are. Because if you think about the track Girl, Girl is about the toxic relationship. You're stuck in this relationship with this girl. You really want her to get away from you, but she makes you feel guilty and you just kind of feel trapped in this relationship, right? And then you get to I'm looking through you and it's kind of the progression of that. Okay, you've finally gotten away from this girl. You've been able to move on with your life. But she's not allowing you to do that. She keeps trying to pop back up in your life, drag you down with her and things of that nature, right? And I feel like in my life is the progression past that where, okay, she's finally left me alone. But now all I'm left to is my thoughts, my memories, my nostalgia of our situation. I'm starting to feel a little different about it. And I think Wait could kind of be like the sequel to In My Life. Like after you sat in your thoughts, right, the girl's gone, now all you have is memories and you start to forget all the bad stuff. Then you miss her. Now you want to come back in her life, even though you know that it's probably not the best situation. And that's what this song felt like to me. It feels like these songs are telling a story, whether the Beatles intended to or not. That's just my head can and my theory. Y'all can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but that's something I definitely noticed during that beautiful song. Right, and this, we're 12 or 12 right now. I don't think I need to say that, right? This is pretty self-explanatory. We're 12 or 12. We're on the track number 13. Take us home on a good note, Beatles. If I needed someone. Let's go. Talk to me, George. If I needed someone. Yeah. Had you come some other day, man. Mm. George is scandalous, y'all. George, man, what? If I 
Okay. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Mr. George Harrison. A plus song right there from George. One of my favorite George songs I've heard so far. All right, that was track number 13, If I Needed Someone, and yes, we're keeping the momentum going. I said earlier, I feel like we got to the point where when a George Harrison song pops up, it's not guessing if it's going to be good, it's just wondering how great it's going to be. And yeah, we're officially here, man. It's crazy. Like, George just feels like he's found his voice, right? Like, this this song right here, the vocals he uses on here kind of sound like In My Guitar Gently Weeps, the way he was bending his voice on here. Yes, yes. Instrumentally, also, this is probably one of the most grand and psychedelic type songs on here. Like the the power, I don't know. It was just a lot going on, but I enjoyed it. I'm I'm enjoying this album, bro. This is gonna be an album that I'm listening to far after this reaction, bro. This is going up there with. I'm gonna tell you after this last track, this is up there with Abbey Road and Sgt. Pepper's. That's all I'm gonna say right now. Let's get through this. Let's get through this album. Though we got one more track. Right, who knows? They could they could fuck it up all fuck it all up right here. Who knows? It's just be a whole bunch of bird noises for, for two minutes and nineteen seconds on this last song. So we finna figure it out. We're on to track number fourteen. Run for your life. Oh, okay, let's get to it then. Oh. I felt that. So kind of scary, y'all. Oh, I like this, girl. Man, Facts. Hey, beautiful outro. Maybe not beautiful, but definitely an outro. Oh my god, <laughs> bro, that was track number fourteen. Run for your life, and yo, this song probably had the most beatily sounding beat. Of the entire album with the least beatly lyrics ever, bro. What was John on when he was writing this one? When I compare John to the Juice World of the 60s, it was for various reasons. Obviously, the the drugs, maybe. That's one reason. Right? The emotional vulnerability, of course. But then also, if you listen to Juice World music, you'll know he had an affinity for threatening his girls' lives, man. Let's just be honest. Like, <laughs> so this song right here, this was a trip, man. I like the song. <laughs> It's just the lyrics just like slap me in the face right there. I didn't expect him to be that vivid <laughs> about wanting to kill his girlfriend if she gets another man. Like, But this is why we love John, bro. This is why we love John. We got to take the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this was definitely ugly, but still a great song, man. Great way to end the album. Perfect 14 of 14. I didn't have to say that, but perfect 14 of 14. All right, so that was Rubber Soul. And I just want to say, man, this album, right, y'all were hyping this album up. And I don't even think y'all hyped this album up enough to me, y'all. Like, this album even blew the expectations y'all were giving me out of the water, right? Like, right there's no helter skelters, no old darling, like, no real, like, uh, aggressive moments on here. But that's not needed. This is, like, 14 tracks of musicians smoking weed, getting high, coming up with ideas, going to the studio and laying the ideas down, bro. Like, expanding their brain power. Right, let's just be honest. And I feel like for everybody out there who's anti-weed, Rubber Soul should be the perfect example of why everybody should smoke weed. <laughs> right, let me stop, let me stop. <laughs> the creative juices get to flow, man, but in all seriousness. Great album, bro, and I'm going to be honest, right? I said Abbey Road and Sgt. Pepper's are my favorite Beatles albums, right? And I don't see this usurping either one of those, but I don't... This might be right under there, right? I have to listen to all of Revolver, right? That's going to be the next Beatles reaction video. I'm going to listen to all of Revolver, right? And I'll finally get my true opinion on what my top Beatles albums are. But this is great. Like, I don't know why this isn't in... Maybe it is held in the same regard, but I don't really see it in the same regard as the later albums, but it should be. Even my least favorite song on here, What Goes On, is a great song. My least favorite song on this album is a great song, and that just... Yes, man. Perfect, perfect performance by the Beatles on here. George Harrison did his thing. Ringo came through with a whoop. John and Paul were tennising this album like a motherfucker. You could tell this is when the competition really started. And I'm going to say John got this one, right, just by just by a little bit, right? John just slightly edged Paul out on this one for me, right? Norwegian Wood, Nowhere Man, The Word, Girl, you know, In My Life, In My Life, like, wait, run for your life. Paul just had too many great joints. John just had too many great joints on here for me to give it to Paul. 
But Paul is really holding his own. Like, like it's neck and neck. If you say Paul had the better joints on this album, I wouldn't argue with you. That's how close it was. But I'm excited to keep it moving forward, man. I'm excited to finally sit down and listen to the entirety of Revolver. A lot of people wonder how I started Revolver but didn't finish it. And the simple answer is the mixing was ass, right? The mixing was garbage. But I realize now that they have a new mixed version out, the 2022 mix. I'm excited to get into that one and hear the songs in a modern form, bro. Like, the, the Revolver was the one Beatles album that sounded just... Like, every, it was just weird, y'all. I couldn't get into it, but now's the time to get into it. The new mixes are here. I'm doing my whoops on YouTube. No time better than the present, y'all. So, be looking out for that. But with that being said, I'm going to be a y'all a duel. It's your boy, Life of Darius, a.k.a. The Nowhere Man, and I am, ah, Jesus Sanders, man. Oof.